principal parts in this story are acted by people from everyday life who have given their time and effort to help in the fight against syphilis. Roy Jackson is played by Eldred Marshall. His mother is played by Mrs. Marshall. His friend Jim and Ruby are played by George Mix and Margaret Lindsay. Jim's friend Linda is played by Thelma Barnes. And Roy's true love, Irma, is played by Blandy Parks. I was in trouble, big trouble it looked like. So I thought, go see Jim. he have been around more than me. Jim will know what to do. Well, Jim knew right off. You got a haircut for sure, Roy. What you do, fool around that gal, sweet on you in the cafe? I told Jim, maybe I'd better see a doctor. Don't be crazy, Roy. I got just a thing for you up to the house. Fix you up in no time at all. Maybe Jim don't think I should worry, but I was scared. They saw I had that Jim called a haircut, didn't hurt any, but it looked mighty bad. I couldn't stay still thinking about the day in town when I got into this mess. Ran into Jim that Saturday. I hadn't been to town for a couple of months. Too much work to do on Papa's farm. We took a walk down Water Street. Jim knew most everyone around here. He had a wave and a good word for everybody. Maybe Jim don't take farming too serious, but they sure got a lots of friends. Then it all started. A couple of good-looking girls came into the cafe. Good friends of Jim, judging by the way to say hello. The one called Linda seemed to take a liking to me right away. I'm no ladies man like Jim, but this Lindley was easy to look at and easy to talk to. It wasn't long before we were laughing and kidding around like old friends. To tell the truth, I don't remember much what we talked about, but it seems mighty nice and cheerful at the time. That afternoon passed in a hurry, and me and Lindley got pretty friendly. Too friendly, it turned out to be later on.
that's the way it was. And just when I've been figuring on asking Irma about our getting married. Here you are, Roy, the little miracle worker. Just what you need. Men, are you in trouble? Stop worrying now. Dr. Waldorf's little miracle cure will dry up your trouble. Sores disappear in 10 to 20 days. Your money back if you are not satisfied. That sounds like pretty big talk to me. Or don't be so stubborn, Jim said. Me and Ruby both use it for our sores like yours. I couldn't argue much. Maybe this was the easy way out. 20 days isn't so long if the cure really works. Like old times dealing with Roy again. Got real mad at first, him staying away so long. But his mama says something's been bothering his mind. Not talking to anyone. Just going around the farm looking mighty blue. Whatever it was, guess he's feeling all right again. Okay, sugar, I'm coming. I'm coming. Great day today, and why not? Sun's been mighty good to Roy's crops. He's made up with Irma, going out regular with her now the saw's all gone. Yes, life's worth singing about today. Cotton coming along fine. Corn head high already. A lot of work and sweat goes into those fields, but when you see a Is that the old trouble come back, Roy? Your saw just breaking out somewhere else? Maybe Jim Sav was a fake, Roy. Good friends sometimes give you foolish advice because they don't know any better. See someone who knows for sure what he's talking about. Folks haven't noticed the spots on my hand yet. Make me feel real ashamed going around trying to hide them. 
Been taking that tiny Jim told me to get for about a week now. Still no sign of it clearing up. What's the matter with your back, Roy? It's all broke out. Roy, you got it on your hands, too. Are you sick, son? Nothing, Mama. Just the sun might have hot out in the field. It doesn't bother me. I feel fine. If it was heat right, son, it would be all itchy and fiery. Seems to me like it's something else. You better see a doctor. Oh, I'm taking the tonic that Jim gave me. He said he'd get rid of it in a hurry. Oh, that Jim and his silly ideas won't let Ruby even see a doctor, and she is six months big. Oh, Mama, cut it out. You don't like Jim, that's all. I had a sore last month. He gave me some sand that dried up fine. You had a sore, Roy, and didn't tell me nor your papa about it. We thought you were feeling low on account of you and Irma had a falling out. Leave Irma out of this, Mama. Let me be. I'm no baby anymore. Now listen to your mama, Roy. I've taken care of all of you when you were sick. Not by just sending in a dollar for a bottle of tonic that claimed to cure man or mule. You get some sense into your head and go and see Dr. Jones. Jim, not guessing about this kind of trouble, Mama. It works for him, and it will work for me, too. This is a special day at Mount Holly. The county health department has come down to spread the gospel of good health. The windows are covered so pictures can be shown. And Reverend Harris introduces Mrs. Green to the congregation. She's going to talk about a sickness everybody should know about, syphilis. Some people call syphilis the pox of a bad blood. But whatever name you give it, it's real bad. You may be strong or puny, Rich or poor, but when that syphilis germ gets into your blood, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Syphilis is a very catching sickness. You get it mostly by sexual intercourse, by fooling around with someone who has syphilis already. Babies can catch syphilis, too, before they're born. See this poor little fellow? His mother had syphilis while she was still carrying him. And when a baby catches syphilis from its mother, it will likely be born dead, or worse than that, all crippled up like the baby in the picture. Some people get a warning sign when they catch syphilis. Mostly, it is a sore on their private, because that is where the germ gets into the body. You've heard men call it a haircut. A woman might not see her sore if it's inside of her. That first sign usually goes away after a while, even without any treatment. But syphilis doesn't give up this easy. Maybe two or three weeks later, you get a second sign. Maybe a sore in the corners of the mouth like this. Or patches of hair may fall out. Some get sores on their face. People think they are ringworms or call them nickel and dime spots. Sometimes it is a breaking out, a spot on their hands and feet. Lots of people get this kind of a warning, and most all of these sores are as catching as can be. That is how syphilis is spread from one person to another. Now, many people don't know that these are warnings of syphilis. A lot of people who catch syphilis don't get any of these signs at all. So they go for years not even knowing that they have syphilis. They may feel all right, but the germs are still eating away inside their bodies if they don't get the treatment. Then years later, they may get swellings in the joints like this woman, or go crazy, or get heart trouble. They get sores like this that never heal up, just eat, 
deeper and deeper. You can keep this from happening to you. Go to your health department or your doctor and get a blood test. If your blood test shows that you have syphilis, there's only one way of getting cured. Salves and tonics won't help you. Go to your health department or your doctor for treatment right away. It takes only a few days to kill the syphilis germ and make you healthy again. about my son. He has rash on his hands and his back, just like the picture you showed today. Have you tried telling him to come to the health department or see his doctor? You know, a blood test is the only way of telling what his sickness really is. That's the trouble, Mrs. Green. I keep asking him. He won't listen to me. He's taking a tonic that his friends say would cure him. Well, you can be sure that those home remedies won't do him any good if it's syphilis he's got. Here. I'll give you an appointment slip for him. Then he'll know what day and hour to come to the health department for a blood test. If your son has syphilis, Mrs. Jackson, and doesn't take the treatment, he's going to have a lot of trouble. Thank you. I'll try to get my boy to come in for a blood test. Thank you. The lecture gave Roy plenty to think about. That fellow has a breaking out like mine. He went to the health department, but Jim can't see it, calls it a lot of fancy talk, insisted he and Ruby took care of themselves when they had it. But Roy just can't get the pictures at the lecture out of his mind. Maybe Jim and Ruby claim they feel all right, but the health lady says, you never know when that syphilis is going to come back and cripple you up. I had a talk with the health people, Roy. You were so bashful in talking yourself. This is a slip they gave me to give you. Man, you're in big trouble now. They have your name, and they're going to take you off and feed you full of shots. It'll make you sick as a dog. You see here, Jim, you have caused enough trouble with your hoodoo cure. Did you hear the lecture? If you are so smart, take Ruby to the clinic and see if she and the baby is all right. Let Roy take care of his own business. Let's go home, son. I have a dinner to get on the table. That's a bad looking rat, sir. Oh, it'll soon be gone. Jim is picking me up with some special tonic he got. If I were you, I'd get me a blood test. How you know it ain't the pox? I feel all right. Why should I go messing around with doctors and treatment? I don't blame you, Roy. They tell me they have neither out there that long. Stick you up your back like you was a pig. Oh, you're crazy, Willie. There's nothing to it. Well, I took the treatment when I was in the Army. I'd rather do that any day than to be crazy, or blind, or end up like old Ben. That simply is nothing to fool around with. Remember the lecture, Roy. You'll have to make up your own mind, Roy. Who are you going to believe?
The health department was new to Roy. He saw the doctor look right inside of a man with one of those x-ray machines. Saw the clinic that helps mothers keep their babies healthy. There was malaria control, dental care. The VD clinic looked like he should have come here long ago instead of fooling around with Jim's cures. Roy was embarrassed at first, seeing what his trouble was, but he got over that. The people acted like they were there to help him, not blame him for the trouble he got into. Saw the man from the church lecture, too. He told Roy the doctor would give him an examination first, and then he'd get his blood test. That's what syphilis can do, the doctor told Roy. That man had syphilis for years. Didn't know it until he went blind. We cured his syphilis. The germs won't do any more damage, but he'll never be able to see again. And that's why it pays to get a blood test regularly. Then you know for sure that you're all right. The doctor didn't do any guessing. Checked Roy's throat. Looked at the spots on his hands. Looked at the rash on his back. Seemed like it was syphilis all right, but the blood test would be the proof. The doctor told Roy, be sure to take the treatment if your blood test shows that you have syphilis. You can go to your doctor or to the medical center run by the health department. The treatment you get there is free. Time for the blood test. Like he told Jim later on, when you never had one, you get kind of scared. No reason for it. Everybody says it doesn't hurt, but you just can't help worrying, wondering what it's going to be like. People weren't fooling. Just like they say, there's nothing to it. Roy's blood is put in a tube and sent away for testing. In a couple of days, the report came back. Yes, Roy's trouble is syphilis. Roy decides to go to the medical center for treatment. The center is run by the health department. They pay your transportation there and back home again. You get a place to sleep and all the food you can eat. Good food, too. And it doesn't cost you a penny. One of the first things you do at the center is get another examination. It always pays to double check when you're dealing with this syphilis. Listen to that poor baby cry. Makes Roy want to get home fast while there's time to talk some sense into Jim's stubborn head. Ruby should have this treatment right away before her baby is born. While the doctor listens to Roy's heart and lungs, he sees a little sore on the side of Roy's nose. The doctor takes a smear from it on a glass slide. If there are syphilis germs in that smear, then there's no question that Roy has syphilis. You want to take a look at this? See those corkscrew things moving around? You can only see those, they're so small with a microscope. That's the germ that causes syphilis. They're in the rash on your hands and back, and in that little sore on your nose. They got in your blood through that sore you said you had on your privates. You can see now why salves and tonics could never do any good. All they do is dry up your sores. The treatment you get here will kill those germs in your blood. You can put your shirt back on now. 
It's a good thing you came in soon enough so those germs won't have a chance to do any serious damage. Well, it will take only a few days to clear this up. Before you know it, you'll be well again. Then you won't be able to give syphilis to anybody else. That's the big thing, Roy. When folks get syphilis and don't get treated, they can pass their sickness on to the people they go with. Maybe someone they like very much, like their wife or their sweetheart. That's right, doctor. When you don't know what the syphilis is, you can get other people into a mess of trouble. Well, good luck, Roy. You'll be all right as long as you take the treatment until you're cured. Roy's had several shots by now, but it's the first day for the others, and they feel like Roy did the first time. Can't take their eyes off the needle. of seconds and you've had your shot. It's hard to believe that something as simple as that kills those syphilis germs, but it does. No two ways about that. all the kidding about? Why, Roy has his bag all packed, all set to go home. See? The rash on his hands is gone. The doctor says his trouble's all cleared up. Won't be long until he sees his folks in Irma again. Much as it hath pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of this little child, we therefore commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Let us pray. Our Father, our Lord, in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It took a deal of talking to get our man for a blood test. She said she felt fine. But when I told her some of the things I'd seen and why Ruby's baby died, she stopped arguing. Her mama wanted her to go to the family doctor. And I said it didn't make any difference, just so she had to test. Irm was bashful about coming in for something like this, but the doctor made us feel easy right away. While I was waiting, I got to thinking about Ruby's baby dying. Too bad she and Jim had to learn about syphilis the hard way. They're taking the treatment now. The blood test showed they both had syphilis. Dr. Jones said I did the right thing coming in with Irma. Every couple should have this blood test before they are married. He told Irma, don't you worry. Roy here has had the treatment and is healthy again. When the reports come back on your test and it says you are all right, why, then you two go right ahead. Have as many children as you want. <laughs> 